Hello everyone and welcome yourselves back to the channel, back for more Cobra Kai discussions. Today we're here to talk about Cobra Kai Season 5 and the top 10 characters who featured within Season 5. So spoilers ahead of course, because I will be touching on why they are the best characters because of this season. Um, <coughs> subscribe and like of course. Um, let me know down below your favourite characters or your favourite character. Um... <coughs> I have many more videos in the pipe works, including a Cobra Kai season one to five review. It talks about the spin offs, some predictions I have, and the rankings of the five seasons. So do stay tuned for those as well. If you have any, any other video ideas, down leave them down below. And let's dive in to the best 10 characters that featured within season five of Cobra Kai. <laughs> and I also want to say, I may end up doing a ranking of all the characters that feature um, in the series, which could be a good idea, ranking all the characters in Season 5. And I will do more rankings as well, more tier lists. Um, um, so do suggest anything below you want to see. And hey, let's go. So, <laughs> before we dive into the top 10, I have, I have three... Uh, I'm going to say three audible mentions when I get to about the midpoint, so you'd be like, oh, so these characters do not feature, but you see why. So in 10th, I have gone with Stingray. Um, simply Stingray is in his list because the episodes he appeared on were fantastic. The guy who plays him, he's just so energetic and he's able to bring his character to life so well. He features in one of the early episodes and then he features in the finale um, when the kids approach. It might be episode 9 and 10, I think he features. He might appear three times. Uh, his help outside the, uh, the dojo uh, with Daniel, I loved that. I loved how he explained the whole Crease and Silver thing through Dungeons and Dragons and I loved his return to Cobra Kai. That is why he is 10th on this list. Uh, number 9 on this list is Miguel. Um, uh, he doesn't deserve to be any higher. He's a great character. Uh, in my opinion, Miguel has gone down the rankings of good characters every season. Season one was his, it was his highlight, and I don't think he'll ever be able to get that back. I, I love the emotion that was driven through him in this series. I loved his relationship with Robbie, Johnny. Um, his fight with Robbie was one of the best parts of the series. Um uh, I loved his old arc with Sam. I didn't really enjoy the Mexico stuff. I like how he got closure on his dad because he ended up being an arsehole. But I think there was nothing else Miguel could have done. And I think because of those first three episodes, Miguel was sort of uh, pushed down the <clears throat> the rankings of the list because his acting didn't really show. And he's not a terrific actor in as well as some of the others, in my opinion. So ninth on this list is Miguel. Eighth, I'm going to be going to... I originally had someone else in this, but I've just switched it out. I'm going to be going eight is Mike Barnes. Barnes is on this list simply because I actually adore what Sean Kanan did for his character. I loved his introduction. I loved how they used the quotes that symbolized he, he thought Daniel thought he was talking to Silver on the phone in the, um, the sofa store. And then when he returns, I think stealing the limousine and, um, and uh, just his first encounter, re-encounter with Daniel and Chosen, and then first meeting Lawrence. I loved everything about it. And Barnes just brought something fresh and amazing to the show. So he's eighth on the list. Going into seventh, we're going to be going with Robbie. And I, he is one of a couple of kids that are on this list. The rest are mostly adults. So, um, yeah, I've put Robbie on this list because I think he's the kid who stood out the most. I loved his balance between not wanting Cobra Kai and Miyagi-Do to fight, his willingness to make up with Eli and Miguel, um, his, his relationship with Tori, his ability to attempt to get into Kenny's mind and then approach him in, approaching him at the end after Silver's arrest. I think he was so well put together. He didn't force anything. He stood up for everything he believed in and he was using what his past experience to help. And I love his little monologue with LaRusso because it's the first time we saw them two together since his arrest. So, um, yeah, an amazing character. And I my favourite child or teen actor who features. 
sixth of this list is none other than Kreese. I think Kreese deserves to be no higher on this list, but no lower, because I loved his arc. I loved how he made us all think we should have sympathized for him and that he was growing uh, weak and he, he just wanted to have an easy life after, obviously, Daniel basically told him to fuck off. Uh, I loved that scene. He basically lost Johnny again. And then he lost Tori, and then eventually we thought he was dead. So he went through everything in this series. The whole flashbacks, um, the uh, the scenes where he saw like young versions of Johnny himself, Silver, uh, when he saw Silver old, Johnny old, and everything from that point. I think Kreese went through a lot of brilliant scenes, especially just being in prison as well. And then obviously there's going to be huge stories for him in season six. And I can't wait to talk about the future of him going forward. Fifth on this list has to be none other than Devon Lee. And in my opinion, the one character who developed and improved the most of all the kids. I think, you know, her being at, um, I had the name in my head. Uh, Oh, so annoying when I forget things. Uh, the Blue Dojo, <laughs> uh, who Xander was obviously representing in season one. Uh, Tupenga Karate, I thought of the name. Um, yeah, from her determination to prove that she didn't want to join Cobra Kai to fighting Tori to seeing how hard Tori is to wanting to better Tori by joining Cobra Kai and then ultimately teaming up with her against her old sensei at the end. I thought it was brilliant development. I think she stood out the most. She was resilient. She was hot-headed, but she did it for the best of her mind because she is always willing to be the best. And we saw that in season four as well. Nothing would matter if she wasn't doing the best. And I love Devin Lee. And I think, in my opinion, she did better than any other youngster in this show. But before we go into the top four, the honorable mentions I want to put on this list are Eli, Sam, and Tori. Eli, I think because of his, uh, the way Miguel and Robbie pushed him up to fight, the way he was willing to go soft on Kenny, the way he got a tattoo representing his fresh start and allegiance to Miyagi-Do, you know, he didn't have much to do this season, <coughs> but, um, you know, his fight with Dimitri against Kyla at the end, everything about Eli is just brilliant, I love his Hawks in this series, I love his relationship with Moon. And yeah, I think he had a great series. Uh, Tori, she didn't feature a lot, but every scene she featured in was key. Um, her maturity and her determination to go against Silver after everything that went through, getting the video that obviously would put him in prison, and ultimately just teaming up with Miyagi-Do at the end was incredible in itself. She had, she had great moments to see her punch that stone, team up with Sam at the end and team up with Devin Lee. There was just so many good moments for Tori, but in my opinion, she didn't deserve to touch the top 10, but her story was clinical. But same with Sam. I loved how her story arc went from being this scared and not wanting to open herself to anybody and just be alone to coming out of the shell simply because of her father. And it allowed her to return to karate, allowed her to return to what she knew best and gain that confidence and beat Tori and get the better of Tori. But then showing Tori at the same time, you know, it was the end of season three when she was battling against Tori, and now it's the end of season five, and she's fighting alongside her, it's what you call really good writing, and that's why those two and Eli, you know, Eli's uh, <clears throat> flip at the end of season three, and then his determination to be better in season four, and then to be even better in season five, it's just brilliant, Um, so I love those three, but let's dive into the top four, and I think the most obvious not the most obvious of which order they're in, but I think these four characters, you know, without a shadow of a doubt, have to be the top four. And in fourth place is Daniel LaRusso. Probably his strongest season. I loved his uh, up and down attitude. You know, the start was so determined to take Silver down, bring Barnes into the fight, bring Chose into the fight, try and convince Lawrence, and then Lawrence denies. And then he goes in his downward spiral after getting the shit kicked out of him by Silver, and the willingness to go after Silver was dropped out of him. But when everyone teams up, forms a plan behind his back, encourages him to come back, and after the talk with Robbie and stuff, he comes back to the fight and he proves his lessons are wise and he wants to do good for the kids involved. And he ends up taking out the guy who puts so much pressure and harm on him for 30 plus years. And in third place, we have Terry Silver, one of the greatest villains to ever grace TV, in my opinion. 
his manipulation skills, his way of being able to turn Amanda against Daniel was one of my favorite parts of the series. Um, the way he fought Chosen, I love that scene. The way he fought Daniel on multiple occasions. You can see when he was so confident on top of the world when he basically kicked the shit out of Daniel and could have killed him in that point. And at the end, when he was a broken man all over the place and got defeated after teaching Daniel his lessons all those years ago. And he just he just looked cool. He was so charismatic. And as uh, Louis said in the early episodes, he is definitely a James Bond-esque villain. So Thomas Ian Griffith has brought back the nostalgia of what it means to be a true villain. And he truly captivates the evilness, the manipulative side of things, and how he can bend people's minds into thinking the way he thinks. And he just was so good. But the top two go to the, the two standouts of the season, Lawrence and Chosard. And I, I, I've got to say it was so hard to pick who goes one and two because I think Lawrence has been top two for the entire show because what William Zabaka has done for this show is everything. His, the way they have flipped what happened in 84, his defeat, his manipulation from Crease, and the way he has been brought into these five seasons to be... One of the greatest characters I've seen develop from an asshole to a neglect. The way he neglected Robbie, the way he was willing to care more about Miguel, the way he just couldn't put his be- um, his rivalry aside with LaRusso. The reason he's behind, he brought Cobra Kai back, so he is basically at fault for everything that's happening. He brought Kreese out of the wild. He brought Silver back into it because of Crease, and everything has snowballed to this point of where Lawrence is determined to take down Cobra Kai because of the mistakes he's made. He made Robbie and Miguel fight, and they became friends. He has a baby on the way. He's such a good relationship with Carmen. His friendship with Chosen and Barnes in this season was amazing, but more than anything, his scenes with Daniel were perfection. The scene where they flipped the script and where Daniel was drunk and Zabka was getting his life together, it was so well put together, and the lessons these two have learned off each other in the past five seasons and the three films is everything and that's why Zabka is second on this list but Chosen is first on this list for for these reasons an incredible fight with Silver one of my favourite fights in anything I've ever seen um, his comedy in the uh, in the in the dance club the way he has the swords the way he's uh, just dancing around the way he you know tells Johnny about his, his, his love for Kumiko, the way he just has banter and easily talks to Lawrence all the time. It's a relationship we never could have imagined, but I love their scenes together. Uh, the way he fights Barnes, and again, a lovable fight. To see two legends fight each other was just incredible. Um, you know, you think of everything, uh, where he buys the sofa, where he's beating up the guards. Um his flashbacks with Sato, absolutely everything. Chosen was the reason why everyone was excited for this season. To see him with Daniel at the end of the show, you thought him and Daniel, it's just going to be epic. And then Zabka steps up, Sean Kanan steps up, Thomas Ian Griffith, Martin Cove, they all stepped up. The six adults of the show stepped up to a level where you're thinking, this is fucking unreal. You know, Amanda and Carmen, they were enjoyable to watch. The kids of Devon, Sam, Tori, Robbie, Miguel, Eli, you know, Stingray's character was brilliant. I loved all the side characters. But these are the 10 characters that I've gone with, with the honourable mentions. Um, You know, I, I want to say Dimitri had a great series. I loved how he wasn't really involved in the karate side of things. But the tech side of things is where the importance came in. Um, and I'm going to be making a top 10 worst characters very soon because I think certain characters annoyed me or just simply didn't get the time or development they needed to. So do stick around for that. But let me know down below your favorite character. Do you agree with my list? It's up to your own viewing, by the way. You know, Zapka could be one. Daniel could be one. Silver could be one. Martin Cove, Screece could be one. Um... Who knows, people might put Miguel as number one, but I don't think any kids deserve to be number one because they were heavily absent from the first five, six episodes in comparison to the adults. And this, at the end of the day, is the adult storyline. You know, as good as the Cobra Kai dojo fight was, it was no way near on the level of seeing Barnes, Chosen, and Johnny fight against Silver's henchmen. It just wasn't. 
But that is not taking anything away from the kids because I'm living on nostalgia at the moment. And that's how it's always going to be. Every single person involved with this show did absolutely a credit. Um, and I can't wait to see more. So stay tuned for more videos coming from the Cobra Kai world. If you have any suggestions, like I said, leave them down below. And be sure to check out my future interviews as I'm in the development of contacting people and hopefully getting them on the channel. So don't expect anyone huge like Zabka or Machio, but um, do stay tuned for more. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, goodbye.